My name is David Brown. I have a blog called The Trini Troodon, and I'm making a video based on an essay article I previously posted. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is the argument over uh, what could kill a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, I have a few of my models and toys here. This is a Tyrannosaurus. I very distinctly recall I had actually gotten this at a gas station, one of the convenience stores. Uh, now it's pretty good. Uh, the jaw, especially the lower jaw, is maybe a bit chunky. It looks like it would open and close, but it doesn't. Uh, the feet are a bit small, so it actually is a little hard to get it to stand up. Uh, and they've still got the hands curved downward from what we know now. Most dinosaurs would have had the hands turned sideways. Now, with this guy, uh, what you can see is that it has a big head and a very robust head, even compared to other dinosaurs. And that's going to figure a lot in uh, the discussion here. And they have kind of a set of bumps here. We've had pretty good evidence for that, though we don't know quite how much it would be visible on the original animal. Uh, now, what I've already ranted about is that we have this idea of Tyrannosaurus as something like a Godzilla, kaiju you can't hurt. And certainly if a, it was an unarmed human against a Tyrannosaurus, all you could do is run or hide, and even that would be debatable. And that's something I'll get to. And uh, it's also true that Tyrannosaurus was one of the few dinosaurs we know of, Carnosaurus specifically, that didn't really have any competitors, at least that we found. Uh, when it lived, or by the time the last of them lived, it was North America, and there weren't any other big Carnosaurs left. Uh, there were the Velociraptors, Deinonychus, uh, the Troodontids, but uh, they were not really close to Tyrannosaurus in size. Like an average large uh, Dromaeosaur, that's what we call Deinonychus Velociraptor and their relatives was maybe 200 kilograms, that would come out at 400 pounds, or even 100 to 200 kilograms. Uh, a Tyrannosaurus, even if you go with a fairly conservative weight, you're looking at about 8 tons. That's the same as a very large African elephant, though actually not quite as big as the largest elephants that have lived recently. And so, well, it didn't have any other predators close to its size. There were still creatures that were at least as big as it was. Uh, like Triceratops, they would have been about the same size as a Rex, and of course they had the really big horns. Uh, then there's other things I'll get to, and something else is that we've always been tempted to compare it to uh, the predators we know about, like the lion. And the thing about that is that the lion isn't even that big compared to contemporary animals. A lion might be 400 or 500 pounds using the archaic units and it is bigger or as big as a lot of its prey but there's still things that will kill that are bigger than it is uh, like a cape buffalo that's really the biggest 
you can get uh, that a lion will still take on, or rather a pride of lions, and even with the zebra, you've got about twice the size of a lion, and with the predators even, uh, there are some that are pretty close to a lion size, uh, and you would think, especially if hyenas, one hyena is maybe a quarter to a half the size of a lion, depending on if you count the male lions or females. And, of course, uh, the hyenas can assemble in much larger numbers than lions. And uh, what we've really figured out, we think of hyenas stealing from lions, what we really know now is that it happens both ways so there's probably about as many times the lions steal from the hyenas as the reverse now with the tyrannosaurus uh this is where you really get into where we've mythologized this we think of it as almost invincible and another thing is that we still think of it as hunting like a lion we can shoot or one of the big cats we show it uh, biting and holding, or even uh, kind of wrestling like in King Kong. That's the original King Kong. And the thing about that movie is that it was already fantasy or science fantasy with a good amount of humor. So it's really not that objectionable. Uh, but what we've really figured out looking at the living animal is that it was not hunting like anything we that exists today. The only things we can really closely compare to a Tyrannosaurus are a great white shark and a Komodo dragon, or uh, what the natives call an Ora lizard. And this is where we're still kind of reconstructing, uh, but what we definitely know about those predators is that they're if not ambush predators, at least uh, predators that rely on a very short engagement. Uh, so they'll make one fast strike, get in one bite, and then either the prey is dead or it's wounded enough uh, that they don't have to do anything else. And then if the first strike misses, uh, either the prey runs away or the predator backs off, or both. And that, if you factor it in, would really uh, limit the drama of it. You aren't going to see, if you were being realistic, a Tyrannosaurus in a long battle with any other dinosaur. Uh, it would be like watching a fencing match as opposed to a wrestling match. And... If you know anything about it, uh, the whole thing with fencing is that if it's two people who really know what they're doing, the first thing they're both going to try to do is get in the first stab. Uh, so it would be a few seconds, and even that might be longer than average. So with that in mind, we can look at uh, the creatures people have talked about, and the big one is the Spinosaurus. Now, this is where there's going to be a backlash. People trying to say Spinosaurus is overrated. Uh, and, and another thing that I didn't really cover in the essay I did, uh, people will complain uh, that Spinosaurus didn't live at the same time as Tyrannosaurus or in the same place. Uh, Spinosaurus itself lived in Africa. We've found others in places like South America, Australia, Asia, uh, but never in North America. Uh, the thing about that, it's kind of a dirty secret for paleontologists. Uh, we were not really looking for these things for a very long time. Uh, we didn't have a very good 
specimen of a spinosaur to know what it was supposed to look like, and then the parts of it, the spinosaurus look a lot like other things. It's got the head, to some extent, teeth like a crocodile's. It's got big claws that you could mistake for either a large raptor or something like an allosaur, tyrannosaur. If you, at least if you just saw the claws alone. And it's got the tail spine, or the rather the fin spines. Uh, that even was similar to a lot of dinosaurs that weren't closely related, plus uh, the Nymetrodon, which people will rant is closer to humans than dinosaurs. That's rants including mine. Uh, so if it turned out uh, that there were Tyrannosaurs in North America at the time of T-Rex we didn't know about, it would not be that big a surprise. Now, the thing with Spinosaurus, it was definitely one of the deadliest Carnosaurs that existed, uh, but what made it most dangerous was simply that it was adapted to live in environments where other Carnosaurs, even other dinosaurs, probably didn't go that often, and that would be especially if it was two animals that coexisted in the same ecosystem normally. It was an aquatic dinosaur. We're still kind of debating how much so. Uh, so it would have ate mainly fish. And when it did hunt other dinosaurs, it would have been the same as a crocodile. It would have stayed in the water where it could make an ambush. And then it had this gigantic head and... I've put in a Spinosaur video, it's not quite shown in this model. It had very large teeth in uh, the front, the very front of the upper and especially the lower jaw. Uh, so if this struck, what it would definitely do is go for the throat from below. And if that happened on a Tyrannosaurus, uh, the T-Rex is already dead. And of course, if that didn't happen, uh, the Tyrannosaurus bite would also probably kill the Spinosaurus if it got in a bite, and then the T-Rex doesn't really have to aim. It's got the big jaws. It's like uh, comparing a, re a rapier or a fencing foil with a battle axe. Uh, and with Tyrannosaurus, if it doesn't get the throat, it can get the arm, the belly, the uh, leg, and nothing is really going to shrug off either the T-Rex bite or the Spinosaurus bite. So you can consider them about equal. Uh, if they had ever lived together, probably the only way you would get them to encounter each other is if something changed. Say if there was a conflict like we get with lions between Tyrannosaurs, where one Rex got pushed, or a small group got pushed out of the normal territory and had to go into a either a completely unfamiliar habitat or a place it wouldn't normally go. And Another dinosaur that could definitely threaten a Tyrannosaurus was an Ankylosaurus. Uh, here's a pretty good model of one. Uh, it really might be a few different species. I'm not going to take a closer look at what it is. And uh, this is really out of scale. Uh, the size of a normal Ankylosaurus would really be a lot closer to the T-Rex than you'd see. Uh, still not quite as long, but then it's got the armor, it's got the tail club, and it's also got this head. Uh, a lot of the time it was with spines like, or spikes like you see here. And what gets underestimated, people argue about whether Pachycephalosaurus head-butted uh, which I have a video about also, 
with ankylosaurs, they actually came closer to the shape of the creatures we know headbutt, like a ram. It had a very heavily armored, broad, and flat head. So if it didn't get the tail club, that is, if it couldn't bring the tail club to bear, it could still just charge right at the Rex, maybe hit a knee or an ankle, and that in itself could easily have killed a dinosaur, I, that is the Tyrannosaur, either actually deal the fatal injury or at least hurt it badly enough that it wouldn't be able to hunt. Either it would starve before it recovered or it might never recover at all and just waste away. And another one that gets underestimated is the Hadrosaurs. Uh, here is a definitely dinosaurs Hadrosaur, obviously not the same scale as this. Uh, we kind of assume the Hadrosaurs were like zebras, uh, so not heavily armed, except uh, we're really underestimating the zebras. Uh, with the zebra, they do have teeth, uh, same as a horse or a donkey. They've got hooves, and they also uh, normally travel in numbers, plus they've got a pretty bad temperament, if you follow what zookeepers will say about them. So, sure, uh, if you go with the zebra analogy, one hadrosaur might be killed fairly easily, uh, but then really the same as a zebra. It would have to be one hadrosaur versus a tyrannosaurus, and what we know about hadrosaurs is that they could gather in very large groups. They were probably the most social, or at least what I might call gregarious, groups of dinosaurs that ever existed, especially uh, we found nests of these things that were grouped together closely. And anything like that, even for Tyrannosaurus, would be pretty close to no-go. The only things that would stand a chance would be the little guys, uh, the Dromaeosaurus and the Troodontids. They can move around, eat the eggs, maybe even also protect the eggs indirectly if they were eating small mammals or reptiles that were after the eggs. Uh, and the other thing with hadrosaurs, they were pretty big. An average one would be the size of a hi hippo or a rhino. Some of them may have been as big as Tyrannosaurus. And they've got this beak. We think of it like a duck bill. But that was a really a very misleading comparison that set us back. Uh, it's better to compare it to a parrot or a finch. Uh, and with a parrot, uh, they can take fingers off. They could probably even kill if they were very seriously provoked and they knew where to strike. And... Another thing that we are still learning about are uh, some of the dinosaurs with very large claws that weren't primarily predator. Uh, there's Therizinosaurus, which just got into Jurassic World, and there's Dinochirus, which we didn't know about for a long time. Uh, and people had argued with both dinosaurs whether they were predatory, what we know now. Uh, Therizinosaurus would have been primarily herbivorous. Dinochirus was more like a bear. A lot of their diet would have been some kind of plant, and when they did eat meat, it wouldn't have been large prey. It could have been fish. Uh, we have pretty definite evidence that they ate fish. Also, uh, just smaller animals, including smaller dinosaurs, or just stuff that was already dead. And with either Dinochirus or Therizinosaurus, uh, they'd be pretty close to even against a Tyrannosaurus. And another thing is that both of those animals would have coexisted not with T-Rex, 
uh, but with Tarbosaurus batar, T. batar. Uh, for a while, there was a very vocal group uh, that were saying it should be Tyrannosaurus batar. That kind of died down. Uh, so, a uh, Tarbosaurus would have been the same size as either of these. A uh, Tyrannosaurus rex would have been heavier, but then these things would still have been about the same size. A Therizinosaurus might have even been a bit higher, uh, though this was mostly because they were built differently, which you can also say with the Spinosaurus. So, if it was a head-on confrontation, the Tyrannosaurus would probably just back off. It would just be too risky to take a hit from the claw to the throat. Uh, but if the Tyrannosaurus could do an ambush, which is probably what they do against a lot of their prey, it would just be trying to sneak around, and at that point all bets are off. Uh, the dinosaur might turn around and like a Dinochirus might turn around in time, or it might not. Now, uh, here's what I want to do to add to my original article. And it's also something I'd really meant to cover a bit more of in my Jurassic Park video. And that is how you could survive meeting a Tyrannosaurus. And with that, uh, what they don't normally show in the movies is uh, that there's plenty of firearms that could deal with Tyrannosaurus. Uh, there's a story from the 1950s, a gun for a dinosaur that was about the Holland and Holland elephant guns. Uh, those were as big as we got. They were still made for hunting. And since then, to some extent, even at that time, uh, we have what are called anti-material rifles. These are military weapons uh, that have extreme power, enough to punch through serious armor, even destroy uh, the lighter armored vehicles. Uh, the main calibers for that are either uh, the 50 caliber machine gun, uh, or some others, even higher calibers. The Soviets made a World War II rifle in 14.5 millimeter, and there have been some experiments to put 20 millimeter cannon shells in rifles. Any of those would kill a Tyrannosaurus, certainly. They would kill anything that ever lived. Uh, the only real issue is... Uh, they're still somewhat small caliber for very big game rifles, so they might just spend a lot of their energy going through the dinosaur and out the other side. Uh, you could mitigate that if you just uh, kept what they call the cartridge uh, with the case and propellant, but modified that to take something that was bigger, and that's definitely been done. Like... Uh, necking up a 50 caliber uh, round to take a 12 gauge shotgun slug. Uh, and that's assuming, of course, you're armed and prepared, which you might not be. Even if you were in a hunting expedition, normally you'd have things uh, for up to maybe the size of a bear or a moose, not even the size of one of the relatively small carnosaurs. Uh, and then if you were meeting Tyrannosaurus unarmed, I would actually say the Jurassic Park book did a good job of that. People make fun of it for saying the Tyrannosaurus won't see if you freeze. And the movie kind of made it worse by actually establishing that is what the pay Dr. Grant believes as a paleontologist even before he meets the dinosaur in the book. Uh, there's obviously the issue that it's a genetically engineered animal that's specifically using frog DNA, so it might not be the same as a dinosaur. But the big thing in the book, uh, what really happens is that 
when the Tyrannosaurus doesn't eat Dr. Grant, Dr. Grant really has is completely surprised and he's just trying to figure out why it hasn't eaten him. Uh, and what it is put down other places in the books, especially talking about the Velociraptors, is that a dinosaur, if it was a real dinosaur and not just put together from other things, would not have a response to a human's. We're just a human. We're just too different from anything that lived alongside the dinosaurs. Uh, now we do walk on two legs, so they might consider us similar to themselves in that way. Beyond that, though, uh, we're like nothing that existed, so probably their first reaction would be either to ignore us or just try to figure out what we are. And at that point, uh, the whole thing about freezing is not the best plan, but it's really not a bad plan either. If you run away from any predator, it's much more likely that it will attack simply because uh, running away shows that you fear it, and it advertises that you might be slower than the predator, so at that point you're advertising that you are acting like food. Uh, but if you're just standing there, it will be taking more time to try to figure you out. And that, again, would apply for any predator that exists now or at any other time. Uh, and what might work even better is to actually act aggressive, maybe not do anything to attack it, don't, but still uh, shout, yell, shake things at it. If you actually add something medieval like a polearm, that uh, would actually make you look like a dinosaur that could defend itself. And so if you're acting like you're not afraid, again, it would probably either keep sizing you up or back off. So, uh, overall, if uh, there was a circumstance where somehow uh, humans and dinosaurs or anything like dinosaurs did coexist, we could actually get along as long as there was mutual respect for each other. And that is a pretty good message in general. Uh, and when we fear things, often uh, we just try to exterminate them, which sometimes was justified when we were just cavemen with spears. Certainly we had fewer options, uh, but when we are able to defend ourselves and the predators know that, usually we get left alone, especially if we just are able to leave the predators in their own space. And with that, I've already gotten a pretty long video out of this, so I'm going to sign out for now. I'll definitely be doing more on dinosaurs, Jurassic Park, other stuff. I might even do another video today. Uh, so I'm signing out. Uh, live and let live.